Everybody's like, please let us go, please let us go. And then they're like, don't leave, brothers, have supper, have supper. You know, everybody's sitting down. If they said that after Salat al we will we will show a five-minute movie, the person will look at his watch and say, I, I still have some time. I can get to work a little late, it's okay. Only because of the movie. So what I'm saying to you is to change your, you have audio, visual, and kinesthetic. Kinesthetic is feeling. And that's like playing games with the people. Playing games, take them outside, have activities. And audio is the lecture. We're doing all audio. And you have, these are the audio team, right? <laughs> We're just all audio. Audio is in fact one of the, um, it's the second, maybe about 10%, 20% of people are audio. And 70%, the vast majority of people, are the TV type people, the movies, including many of us too, we're into that visual. If you just take time in preparing your da'wah projects and using the media, inshallah ta'ala, you will reach 70% of the people that normally aren't even touched by the da'wah. Alright, one of the, um, since we have time, some of this stuff is important because whether you get those fiqh CDs or not, some of this stuff is fundamental that every Muslim should know. Allah Azza wa says in the Quran, قوله تعالى: "أدعوا إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن." In this verse, again, I know it's a verse that you've heard many times. "أدعوا إلى سبيل ربك." Firstly, the surah begins, or the ayah begins with a fi'l amr, which is a commandment. The default is fard for those who took the usul fiqh class. "أدعوا" is it means Call to Allah. So it's not a virtuous thing to call to Allah. It's fard to call to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Udru ila sabili rabbik bil hikma. Bil hikma. Hikma is, um, you'll say, wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is accumulating knowledge of what you're going to tell the people. Accumulating knowledge of what the people need to know. Accumulating knowledge, gathering, taking notes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding that da'wah is to be done like this. Bil hikma. Hikmatul ilm. Hikmatul amal, the hikmah of how you act with the people. All of that knowledge grasped together. Bil hikmah wal mawa'idatil hasana. Mawa'idah hasana means uh, the blessed admonishment or, or beautiful admonish, a beautiful uh, talk and, and passing on the message. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wajadilhum, and argue with them. Billati hiya ahsan. In a way that is more, uh, um, more respectful and more beneficial than the way that they argue with us. Now, what Muslims do is their da'wah is وَجَادِلْهُمْ They're like, if the Muslim read it, it's like everything is like kind of like fuzzy and then they go وَجَادِلْهُمْ Argue with them. So Muslims are like, you hear that article in, in Fox News or something like that? Or, or We got to argue with them. We got to tell the people what Islam is. We're going to show them what Islam is about. We got to argue. And jidal, and, and subhanAllah, I kept emphasizing this in the class, that jidal, arguing, is not the path of the prophets. It's part of the equation, but it is not the fundamental part of da'wah. The fundamental part of da'wah is number one, is gathering what you're talking about, is hikmah. And fundamental part two is mawa'idha hasana is being proactively teaching the people what Islam is. And when you do that, nobody will just say, oh Islam, I'm Muslim. They will argue. And they might actually be very aggressive in their arguing. Then we argue with them. وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ We don't say, oh I don't want to hear the arguing and move away. After you've proactively taught Islam to the people, they will then argue. Then you come back and you argue in a, in a manner that is more refined than the way that they argue with you. Why I'm saying this is because Muslims have this, like I said, a cliche that we will always give da'wah by arguing. How do I answer someone who told me this? How do I argue someone who told me that? I tell you, don't even get involved in that from the beginning. Firstly, know your deen. Secondly, every time someone tells you a misconception, you answer them by saying, thank you for asking the question. You really need to understand Islam in the bigger picture before you understand the answer to this question. Do you got five minutes? And they'll say, yeah, I got five minutes. Now you're proactively telling them what Islam is. And you're in the driver's seat. And that's my analogy. The driver's seat and passenger seat, you always want to maintain driver's seat status. One sister, um, after this class, she, the driver's seat, passenger seat analogy, and like we said, that that's a technique by itself. She, she debated with two missionaries. 
And she, before she says that she had like no confidence in talking about Islam, after this class she debated with two missionaries, she said from the beginning of the argument till the end, she was in the driver's seat, taking them left and right, left and right, and everybody, there were people sitting around her, listening to her debating with them. And at the end, the missionaries said to themselves, and they said, we should never argue with Muslims again. They're too smart. And the people who were listening, they got up and two of them became Muslim. Allahu Akbar. I pray to, and, and in fact, I, I had said at the beginning of the class when I taught this, I said, that's my goal. If one person can become Muslim, even from the whole class, then I've done my duty. But I'm going to say one last, one last thing inshallah, and that is technique number eight, and that is debate marathon. Debate marathon. Debate marathon. You'll understand it. Just write it down. What the debate marathon is, usually when Muslims argue, if you tell someone, you know, I've been talking to this person about Islam. How many times did you talk to him? You know, you know, the person lost hope in this guy. How many times did you talk to him? Actually, we only talked once. You only talked once and you lost hope in the person? And they're like, yeah. And I actually boycotted this person and forget them. Sometimes they don't even talk to them. They boycott them before the person even knows that they're boycotted. Nuh alayhi salam. And, and when you see, when, when non-Muslims bring their message, they come from every different angle. From TV, from the newspaper, from rallies, from school curriculums. They keep coming from every angle until you can't possibly get away from hearing the message that they're trying to promote. But when a Muslim gives the message, they're usually looking for the ideal opportunity to tell their message once. And again, that's not the technique that you find in the Qur'an and Sunnah. You find the Qur'an and Sunnah, the Prophet ﷺ, knocking on the people's door every single day, telling them about Islam, and never losing hope, even on their deathbed, the Prophet ﷺ was still there calling them to Allah And I'll give you this ayah, this is in Surah Hud, verse 32. Surah Hud, verse 32, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the people who argued with Nuh alayhi salam. They said, قَالُوا يَا نُوحُ قَدْ جَادَلْتَنَا فَأَكْثَرْتَ جِدَالَنَا They said, قَالُوا يَا نُوح They said, O oh, Nuh, قَدْ جَادَلْتَنَا You argued with us. فَأَكْثَرْتَ جِدَالَنَا You did kathir. You kept arguing with us. And we've had an, Nuh alayhi salam, for the thousand years he's giving da'wah to them, arguing with them. He never ever stopped arguing with them and telling them about Allah azza wa jal. Regardless of the results, he kept passing the message to the people and their reply to him was, فَأْتِنَا بِمَا تَعِدُنَا They said, if you're telling us that we will be punished, then bring the punishment. When we see the punishment, we will believe. When the rocks come down from the heavens, that's when we will be believers. When the rock crushes us to the ground. They said it in their arrogance to the prophets, and Nuh salam still continued with them. And that's what I'm saying. It's not about a, a yearly conference, and it's not about the ideal opportunity to talk to someone. The message has to keep coming to the people from all different angles, and it has to keep coming and coming and coming until they've heard it. Until there's no more hujjah, they know what Islam is and they've heard the true message. Wallahu ta'ala. You've reached the conclusion of this CD. Take the opportunity to evaluate yourself by going to ilmquest.org where you will find a short quiz on the content of this presentation. That's www.ilmquest.org. Here are a few selections from the titles at ilmquest.org. Self-Image Psychology, presented by Yasser Fazaka. The victimized or, or the victim community of this whole self-image psychology as being the Muslim community. Turn on TV or even your radio. As you're listening to the talk shows or you're listening to, you know, the... Uh, uh, they don't have crossfire anymore. The Hannity or the Combs or anyone. When the term Islam or Muslims comes on, what are the words that are being said about us? They're fundamentalists. They're terrorists. They're militants. They're not loyal. They're a fifth column. They are this and they are that. And, and what happens when, when this is happening to us? Believe it or not, it is affecting us. Where your self-image psychology is being damaged by 
by them damaging your image, so you end up really getting there. Let me tell you, just give you an example of how self-image psychology can, again, can impact us. Remember the story of the people of Musa alayhi salam when they said that they are men who are exceedingly powerful? Fitra, the original nature, presented by Dr. Mamdouh Mohammed. Before I talk about it, let me tell you about a phone call that I received from one of my neighbors a couple of weeks ago. This phone call was from a brother who used to be my neighbor for a long time in Egypt, and he's living now in New York. And I used to know him for a long time. He was a nun practicing Muslim. And when he called me a couple of weeks ago, he sounded to me like a scholar speaking 